Hello everyone and welcome to our online service for this week. This week we will be praying together as part of Thy Kingdom Come International Prayer Movement. 11 days of prayer between Ascension Day and Pentecost Sunday. And we're glad that you've come to join us at this time as we are praying together. But as well as praying, we'll be worshipping God through song and also hearing God speak through an encounter with Elijah as God meets Elijah the prophet on Mount Horeb, speaking in a still, quiet voice. As we begin, let's worship through song. shadows deepen we do do you know that all the darkness stop the light from getting through we do do you wish that you could see it all made new we do Thank you. 
we read from 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 9. There he went into a cave at Mount Horeb and spent the night. The word of the Lord came to him, what are you doing here Elijah? He replied, I've been very jealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down the altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass you by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he pulled back his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars and put your prophets to death by the sword. And I'm the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazel, king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king of Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel-Meholah, to su succeed you as a prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazel, and Elijah will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all who have not bowed the knee to Baal and whose mouths have not kissed him. What a amazing passage. And now we're going to reflect on that as we think about prayer. Remember that one day Jesus' followers asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. And how did he reply? He replied with the Lord's Prayer, a prayer that we've been praying ever since as followers of Jesus. Today, the world is Googling how to pray like never before. And here we are in the midst of 11 days of Thy Kingdom Come, the global prayer movement, of which we're part of through the Horsham Churches Together virtual online 24 seven prayer room. And in our journey, with the prophet Elijah today. We're coming before God in prayer too. So just to re recap where we are, Elijah has called down fire from heaven on Mount Carmel and brought life-giving rains by his word. And then he ran for his life, hiding under a tree in the wilderness, praying for God to end his life. Depression sets in. And by the time we catch up with Elijah here at Mount Horeb, you can hear it in his voice in 1 Kings 19 verse 10 when God asks him, what are you doing here? I've been very zealous for the Lord Almighty, Elijah says. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars and put your prophets to death too. I'm the only one left and they're trying to kill me too. They sound like the words of someone who's feeling like a failure, a lost cause, feeling abandoned and all alone, feeling isolated and insecure, haunted by a past he's unable to escape. And these words are his prayer, a prayer which is open, honest, heartfelt and raw. It's a prayer in line with many of the prayers that we find in scripture, like Psalm 64, the Psalm of David, where he prays as a lament. Hear me, my God, my voice, hear my complaint. Protect my life from the threat of the enemy. This is prayer. Talking to Jesus just as we are. 
not pretending to be super holy or even pretending to have enough faith to move a mountain, but just simply coming, coming to Jesus just as we are. In the isolation of lockdown, in the chaos of the house we can't leave, in the anxious thoughts of a future and the uncertainty of a new normal, in the joy of living the so and the sorrow of death. We can talk about Jesus with what's on our hearts and our minds. And it's here that Elijah opens up his heart to God. And as he does, the Lord speaks again. Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass you by. Now, Elijah would have known what happened hundreds of years earlier when Moses stood on this very mountain. You see, Mount Horeb is actually another name for Mount Sinai. And it's where Moses spoke with God at the burning bush. It's where God wrote the Ten Commandments in tablets of stone. It's where the, God's glory appeared to Moses and where the Lord spoke his own personal name for the first time, speaking Yahweh, I am who I am and I will be who I will be. This mountain, this mountain is a place of dramatic encounters of a personal nature. And so Elijah is here on the mountain of God. He's witnessed the awesomely terrifying power of God over the years, the drought, the never ending oil and flour, the resurrection of a dead son, the fire from heaven, and the rain that came at his command. He'd seen the power of God. He'd, he'd lived for the power of God. When the power of God came on that mountain that day, the hurricane force wind, the earthquake, the fire. Scripture says God wasn't in it. Yes, he'd sent them, but those things weren't God. And I wonder, over the years, had Elijah been so focused on the power of God what God could do and what he could do for God, that he had neglected to spend time in the presence of God. He'd been there always seeking the next answer to prayer, seeking big miracles, unmissable signs in the sky, focused on doing things for God, forgetting that we're called to also just simply be with God. I remember last summer at the new Naturally Supernatural conference, I was feeling completely exhausted. Chronic fatigue was flaring up and at that point I was living with asthma, though I didn't know it yet. And one night after the big worship and teaching session, there come the point when the leaders at the front were calling people forward. They were giving words of knowledge, inviting people to come for healing. And I remember sitting there just saying, pick me, pick me. I want to be the one chosen. I want to be the one healed this night. But my condition was never called out. I didn't get to go forward for healing that night. But instead, God met me where I was, sitting in the chair, in the crowd. And at that moment, I encountered God for a personal encounter, through the presence of his Holy Spirit, right where I was sitting. It was a moment of, of stillness with God, an encounter with God when he just spoke quietly over me, words of assurance and love. For Elijah, here on that mountaintop, God spoke to Elijah in a way that he'd never heard before. Up to now, God's words would have been, go there, say this, do that. But here, here God speaks in that quiet, gentle whisper. It may have been that God has been speaking all along, just that the noise of the wind and the earthquake and fire had drowned out the still, small voice. Maybe... Elijah's inner voice 
that was struggling at this time had drowned out the voice of God too. But now, now in the sound of sheer silence, Elijah could hear God whispering in a still small voice. A whisper. I'm not thinking a, a game of Chinese whispers here between Elijah and God. More like the whisper of a lover whispering, I love you across the room in a way that is intimate, personal, flowing out of a, a deep connection in a loving relationship. Scripture doesn't record what God said to Elijah in this quiet whisper and in why should it? It was deeply personal just between him and God. And it was a moment of still prayer of intimate whispering communication. As I think about that, I'm reminded of a line I read in my daily devotionals, Lectio 365, a few weeks ago. Prayer is primarily relational rather than transactional. God's greatest gift is always, ultimately, simply himself. I know in my prayers before God, my heart is longing for a moment when all my thoughts are stilled and all the things I'm praying for are laid down at the throne of God and I'm simply there, simply resting in the presence of God. A moment when, I don't know, I can't easily describe it, though if you'd see me, I'd, you'd see the most beautiful smile on my face. A smile that just radiated peace and joy and love. I know it's different for everyone, but I know it helps that taking time out to just hit the pause button on our hurried lives and come before God. A God who invites us to meet with him just as we are, wherever we are. At this moment here in lockdown, I like to try and pause on a weekday morning here sitting in my chair in the studio. I do it in the morning while Nay and Caleb are downstairs doing Joe Wicks PE in the mornings. But I'm here in my chair, reading a bit of scripture, praying to God. I know it's not a mountain, but we can meet God in our homes wherever we are. I'm not like Jesus, rising up early in the morning, taking a walk up a hillside. Each of us is different. This is how I like to spend time with God at this moment. Mind you, before I sound too spiritual, I often get distracted by my own thoughts, by the notifications on my phone. Oh, note to self, silence my phone before settling down to pray and read scripture. But however, whenever, whatever we do, let's spend some time this week in the presence of God. For it's out of the dwelling in the presence of God that I think we can truly experience the power of God. And as part of the season of thy kingdom come, we're encouraging you to pray for great miracles, a big move of God's spirit, praying for the communities where we are, our neighbours, praying for our friends, for those we know on our front lines, praying for the wider world, for God to bring an end to this coronavirus pandemic. I'm also encouraging you to pray for five people that you know who don't yet have a relationship with Jesus, praying that they would come to know Jesus. We're asking big things of God. We're asking God to send his Holy Spirit, bringing signs and wonders and miracles to our world, bringing his kingdom to Horsham, to the UK, to the world. And yet, in the midst of this call for power, the greatest encounter we can have, perhaps is an encounter with the presence of God. That's what I pray for each of you listening and watching this day. So I pray for those we are praying for, 
in our daily lives, that we'd encounter Jesus, that we'd know him for a deep, fruitful relationship with God. For it's in the presence of God that we experience the greatest gift of God, the gift of God himself. A gift bought at the cost of Christ's death upon the cross. A gift that will last for all time, getting better and better with the infinite of eternity. And if you're watching this day and haven't yet given your life to Jesus, then let this be the day when you say, yes, Lord, I want to follow you. Lord, forgive me for all that I've done in the past and bring me close to you. Bring me a relationship. Let me know the joy and the love and the peace of being in your presence one more. If you're sitting at home, longing for God's healing, then I pray for God to heal you. Lord, bring healing in our lives this day. Through your spirit, bring healing. Pour out your power, we pray. And as you pour out your power, Lord Jesus, send your spirit, send your presence to bring hope, healing and love. Lord our God, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, in our midst. Come, Spirit of God. And we pray, Lord, let your kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For your glory and for your kingdom forever and ever. Amen.
situation we find ourselves in right now. Uh, this is a song based on the Lord's Prayer. And please join in with the singing and later on as we uh, pray for some specific things. So let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your presence here with us in our living room and wherever we find ourselves. Thank you for the prayer that you've taught us and help us now to bring our prayers to you and to meet you in this place. of isolation, disease and fear, that he would make himself known to the people that we uh, know, that you know and care about. So let's name before God right now any people you know who need to know God's kingdom come in their lives today. sing out over these people. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. 
secondly, let's uh, pray to God for our healthcare systems. Let's name before God any doctors, nurses, hospitals, and other people who are caring for the sick at this moment. kingdom will come over these medical teams. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom Let's pray for our government and our institutions. So let's name before God uh, politicians, leaders, businesses, organizations that are on your heart. Let's pray that God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for joining with us on our online service today. You please know that we are a real church here in Horsham in the UK. We usually meet at Forest School, but at the moment we're meeting online. You've watched us in this way and we also meet every Sunday morning on Zoom. Please get in touch with us through the website and we'll send you all the details. Our website is www.life-baptist org.uk. You can also subscribe to our channel and get the update every time we post a video. Thank you so much for joining with us this morning and I pray that God would truly bless you in this week to come. Bless you. Amen. <laughs>